Good afternoon, hockey fans. Welcome to Today in the NA. I am Vinny Paraselli. There are just eight teams left in contention for the Robertson Cup as the first round is complete, and we are on to the division finals. We had some great series, and we saw three game fives, with one of them going to sudden death overtime. We will recap round one and preview the division finals in just a minute, but first, we've got commitments coming out of the North American Hockey League. Liam Hansen of the Chippewa Steel has committed to Air Force. The forward from Ramsey, New Jersey had 30 points in 34 games this season. In 81 career NHL games, Hansen had 19 goals and 61 points. Maryland Black Bears forward Hunter McCoy has committed to Army. The Newburyport, Massachusetts native has 14 goals and 35 points in 53 games. He also has a goal and assist through five games in the postseason. Cooper Fensterstock of the Amarillo Bulls has committed to Colorado College. The veteran forward had 8 goals and 27 assists this season to give him 35 points in 52 games. In 93 career contests over the last three seasons, Fensterstock has 16 goals and 70 points. Lone Star Browns defenseman Malcolm Palmer has committed to Stevenson University. From Westerville, Ohio, Palmer played in 50 games, registering 2 goals and 13 points. Danbury Jr. Hattricks forward Valentino Passarelli has made his college plans. He will be going off to the University of Wisconsin River Falls. From a commission, Passarelli played in four NHL seasons, most recently with the Danbury Jr. Hattricks, scoring 12 goals and registering 35 points in 52 games. Passarelli also played for the Jamestown Rebels, the Minnesota Magicians as well. In 178 career games, Passarelli had 30 goals and 78 points. Minnesota Wilderness defenseman Dane Stoinhoff has committed to Bethel University. From Esco, Minnesota, the Blue Liner had two goals and 12 points in 54 games this season. And in 99 career games, he had two goals and 17 points. Well, round one is in the books, and it was an intense first round. We saw three game fives take place. Let's start in the Central Division. Bismarck is waiting for an opponent. Aberdeen was up two games and none, but Kate Stibby forces a game four with this double overtime winner in game three. The next night, it was tied late in game four. This time, it's Blaine Warner, who was the hero for Mana Heat as he grabs the go ahead goal. He got the insurance goal as well for the hat trick. The Minotauros forced game five. In the winner take all game, it was Aberdeen who led most of the way, but the Toros just don't quit. Kyle Kukinen ties the game with just under 30 seconds to play, and we are going to overtime. Coming to the end of period four, Puck gets onto the stick of Kyle Gaffney, and that loud noise you heard on Sunday night is the sound of relief coming from Aberdeen, South Dakota. The number one overall seed survives and advances to face Bismarck in the Central Division Finals. Out East, both series went to Game 5. Let's check out the number 4 seeded Maryland Black Bears upsetting number 1 Johnstown as goals from Dylan Finley and Jude Curtis came just 37 seconds apart as Maryland grabbed a Game 5 win in Johnstown 4-3 the final score as they win their first series in team history. The Maine Nordiques hosted a Game 5 on Sunday night and the first 20 minutes were wild as 5 goals were scored, the last one coming from Anthony Calfior to put New Jersey up 3-2 after the first. It didn't take long for the Nordiques to tie things up as Stefan Owens found the back of the net just 44 seconds into period two. Jack Strauss scored just three and a half minutes later to give the Nordiques their first lead of the game. Can't agree with add some insurance. The Nordiques also win their first ever playoff series as they advance to face the Black Bears in the East Division Finals. In the Midwest Division, the Magicians were waiting to see if they would be heading to Janesville or hosting Kenai River. Game 3 saw a complete takeover by the Jets as they scored six unanswered goals to take Game 3 by a score of 6-1. to one. Ty Middleton's hat trick led the way offensively, but in Game 4, the Jets got up to a 3 win lead thanks to a highlight reel goal from Charlie Shane and two goals from Justin Thompson, but the Brown Bears would battle back. Max Helgelson got them within one with his second of the playoffs. The first of the postseason from Lucas Wallen ties the game up at 3. Now with just about four minutes left in the final period, the game winner comes from the stick of Peter Morgan as the Brown Bears advance in the Roberts Cup playoffs for the first time in team history. In the South Division, the Mudbugs and Bulls were tied at one after the first weekend. This time around, it was the Bulls down a goal in the final minute, and they get the equalizer from Harrison Scott, and we need overtime again. But just like in Game 2, it's the Mudbugs that get the game winner just a few minutes into the action. Dawson Trino is the hero for the Mudbugs, and they took a two games to one lead, and would close it out the following night. Another 3-2 win in Game number 4. This one would not need overtime. Shreveport advances, and Amarillo sees their season come to an end. First home playoff game for the Wichita Falls Warriors as they look to sweep the Lone Star Brahmas. Warriors jumped out to a 2-0 lead. Thomas Weiss and Jackson Wozniak scored just 39 seconds apart to open the second period. Lone Star would get within one with Quinn Emerson's first of the postseason. Drew Veaton would get the Warriors back out in front by two as he makes it a 3-1 game. Zach Purcell won't go down without a fight. He makes it 3-2, but an empty net goal from Brennan Kouet has the Warriors 
in the win column and they complete the sweep and they will move on to face Shreveport in the South Division Finals. Coming up in round two, we've got the Bismarck Bobcats taking on the Aberdeen Wings. Now in the regular season, the Wings had their way with the Bobcats going 11-1, but the Bobcats are firing at all cylinders with three straight wins, averaging over five goals a game in the postseason. And the Wings obviously struggling in their first round series with Minot. Both teams are very good on both ends of the ice, Aberdeen being the top ranked team in goals for and goals against per game. Bismarck ranks in the top ten in both categories as well. The top two teams in the Central Division get to face off for the right to go to the Robertson Cup. Next, we have the East Division Finals between Maine and Maryland. The Nordiques won the season series 4-2, while both teams needed five games to get out of round one. Maine and Maryland are both in the middle of the pack in goals for and goals against, so it should be a pretty even series. And don't forget, both power plays were among the worst in the NHL during the regular season, but Maryland did go 4-14 for 14 in their series with Johnstown, giving them a 28.6 percentage, tripling their output in the regular season. That could be the difference in this one. In the Midwest Division, both Minnesota and Kenai River scored upsets in round one. The Brown Bears knocked off top seed of Janesville in four games, while the Magicians swept all three games in Fairbanks. The Magicians owned the Brown Bears in the regular season, winning seven of their ten matchups. Luke Pavisic just got on the NHL Central scouting list for Kenai River. He went 3-1 over the last couple weekends. He could be the X Factor for the Brown Bears if they want to get to the Robertson Cup. Finally, in the South Division expansion, Wichita Falls look to become the first team to win it all in their inaugural season, but to get there, they'll have to defeat the Mudbugs, who won 7 of 10 head-to-head -head meetings in the regular season. Owen Barskevich was sensational in the first round, going 3-0, giving up just two goals per game and posting a 9.23 save percentage. However, on the other side, Cole Hudson has been even better for Shreveport. He started all three Mudbugs wins, allowing five goals in the three games, sporting a 9.43 save percentage. We expect a physical, low-scoring series, and the winner of this one will certainly be battle-tested for Blaine. You can watch every North American Hockey League playoff game on Hockey TV. Follow the NHL on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Check out the Robertson Cup Playoff Hub on our website. All the scores, schedules, news articles, and highlights all in one convenient spot. The NHL just announced the new Kim Cannon internship, so to get all the details on that, visit our website. If you're a recent college grad and want to work in hockey, this is the spot to do it. Thanks for joining us here on Today and the A. We'll be back here next week to recap the first weekend of the division finals. Until then, I'm Vinny Paraselli. Thanks for tuning in.